Okay, Algebra 2, this is a, uh, sec this is the second video, um, continuing on Section 9-1. Um, we finished, or we, we got about halfway through the second page, um, so we're starting with Example 3 now. Um, we're just going to keep plugging away at some trig stuff. I will warn you that you do need a calculator for what we're doing today, so make sure you have that kind of handy. Um, so, uh, and, and then I do need to apologize too, I'm trying to get these videos uploaded as fast as possible, but um, when I upload them to YouTube and then submit them, it takes about four hours for me to get it done. Um, I don't know, my internet must be slower than what's, um, what they have at the school, so um, I'm trying to get them uploaded to you as fast as possible. I know you're really upset that I don't post them right away, um, but hopefully I can get that fixed here in the near future. So, um, starting with example three. We haven't talked through this box yet. Um, I'm going to kind of skip over that um, for right now. Um, we might come back to it here later, but um, what I'm going to do for example three and four um, isn't going to involve what's talked about in this box. So just skip over that for just, just, for just a little bit. Um, example three, use a trig function to find the value of x. Okay. Um, so again, we're dealing with right triangles. And up here in each one of these, we did the six trig functions. So we wrote out the ratios, like five over eight is a ratio, the square root of 39 over eight. And we talked about the ratios of each one of the sides and we wrote out all six of them. Okay, when we're actually solving for a value down here, we're not gonna use all six of them, we're only gonna use one, okay? And it's gonna be either sine, cosine, or tangent. Now we have to decide though, which one of those three we're gonna use. Okay, so I'm going to repeat, I'm going to write down my Sokotoa down here. And we need to decide which one of these trick functions that we need to use. So are we going to use sine? Are we going to use cosine? Are we going to use tangent? Which one are we going to use based on the information that we're given? Okay, so what I tell you to first do, the first thing to do is to find the angle that you're looking for. Find the angle. The angle is 30 degrees, okay? The 30 degree angle is what I'm given. You never look at the 90 degree angle. It's always gonna either be this one or this one, whichever one is labeled. So the 30 degree angle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the two sides that they have um, that, I'm, that I'm looking for, okay? So eight is given to me, X is what I'm trying to find. And then I look and see what are those in relationship to that 30 degree angle, okay? So this guy is going to be the opposite side, right? This guy is the opposite side of 30 but this one I know nothing about. So I'm gonna cross him off. We're not gonna use opposite, okay? Eight is the hypotenuse side, okay? Cause he's the longest side. And then X is gonna be the adjacent side. He is the one that's right next to the 30 degree angle, okay? So when we go to decide which trig function we're gonna use, so we're gonna use sine, cosine, or tangent. It just has to do with the two things that we're involved in, or that we're, that we're using, okay? So which one of these trig functions uses A and H, okay? Um, AH is going to show up with cosine, so that's going to be the trig function that I use, okay? So step two, um, what are you looking for? Like label your sides, in other words. And then step number three, uh, which function are you going to use? Are you going to use sine? Are you going to use so cosine? Are you going to use tangent? So we've decided that we're going to use cosine. Okay, so here's how you set this problem up. We're going to do cosine. And when you do cosine, you have to do cosine of some angle. Okay, so you put the angle inside the cosine. And cosine, uh, the angle that we're, we have is 30 degrees. So cosine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to, just like we did up here, okay, cosine of some angle. They called it B, but here we actually have a number. And we're going to do something over something. Right? Okay. So cosine of 30 degrees equals something over something. The A goes first before the H. A goes on top. H goes on bottom. So A is going to be X and H is going to be 8. Okay. And then to solve for X, think about how you would get X by itself on this side. X is dividing 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 8 to the other side times 8 times 8. And that's what he will look like. Okay. So X is going to be equal to 8 times cosine of 30 degrees. And this is where we type it into our calculator, okay? So I'm gonna do eight times, look on, eight times cosine of 30 degrees, uh, not 300, 30 degrees, okay? Just like that, eight times cosine of 30 degrees, enter. 
and I got 6.93, let's say. X equals 6.93 if we round. That's what he will look like. And so we have to solve for X, okay? So a little bit different than what we were doing up here. Uh, this kind of warmed us up and got us used to using the Sokotoa thing. Um, but down here, when we're actually solving for it, we have to figure out which one we're going to use, which function, okay? Step number four would just be solve, okay? So we, we set up our equation and we solved for X, okay? All right, they're going to do the same thing here to you uh, in example four, but they're going to do it in story problem form. So to calculate the height of a building, Joe walked 200 feet from the base of the building and used an in inclinometer uh, to measure the angle from his eye to the top of the building. If his eye level is at six feet, uh, how tall is the building? Okay. So from eye level up, it is 76 degrees, um, 200 feet. And then we need to know what D is. Okay. So uh, this is this is what we're solving for. Um, step number one, let's find what the angle is. So the angle is 76. That's what we want. Okay. And then we need to label the two sides in relationship to the angle. Okay. So... 76, D is opposite of 76. So in this case, we're going to use O, okay? 200 is the side that's right next to, okay? And that's going to be adjacent. So this guy would have been my hypotenuse side, but we're not using him at all because he doesn't have a label. So we're going to use the trig function that involves O and A, okay? Now, which trig function involves O and A? That one's going to be tangent, tangent O and A, all right? So we write out, we've picked our trig function, tangent, that's step number three, which function, tangent, and we need tangent of something, okay? We always put our degree inside of here, so tangent of 76, and we're going to say is equal to tangent opposite comes first and then adjacent, okay? So the opposite goes on the top, the adjacent goes on the bottom. Opposite is going to be D, adjacent is going to be 200, okay? All right, and then to solve for D, we're going to multiply the 200 to the other side times 200 times 200. Okay, D is going to be 200 times tangent of 76. Okay, make sure you're doing this with me. 200 times tangent of 76. And I got 802.16. 802.16 is what D is going to be, this, this height right here. Okay, now they did do something tricky to us because they said um, his height or his eye level is at six feet. So they're saying here is six feet. Okay, and there's actually like ground below this. Well, they, didn't, they didn't really draw this very well. But there's an additional six feet below where his eye level is at, okay? Um, so if, if that's the case, then D is just from here to his eye level, and we need to figure out what the length of the entire building would be. So we would have to add six feet onto that. Okay, to figure out the length of the entire building. So that is going to be 808.16 feet, and that's how tall the building will be. Okay, so that was one kind of little tricky thing um, that uh, they had to do. Okay, all right, um, let's go to the next one here. Okay, now, um, when you are finding missing angles, there's a little bit different uh, kind of setup going on here. Um, you're still going to you're still going to do things similar to what we were just doing, uh, but there's one little trick at the end. So find the measure of each angle and round to the nearest tenth. Okay, tenth is one decimal place. Um, so one decimal. Okay, and the, and the other two examples, we were rounding to two decimals. That's fine, whatever. Um, this one went around to one decimal. So find the measure of each angle and round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we're trying to find the measure of angle N. Okay, so in the past example, they would give us what uh, that degree was, and we were solving for either 6 or 10. Now we have 6 and 10, and we're trying to solve for that angle. So let's call him X right here, okay? So still going to do the same setup. I'm going to write out my SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, okay? Except we're solving for an angle now. So I have found my angle, and now I'm looking at 6 and 10 and what those are in relationship to X, okay? So think about is six the, the hypotenuse side, the opposite side, the adjacent side? What what two things do we have going on here with six and 10, okay? Six is gonna be opposite. 10 is the longest side, so it's the hypotenuse side. The one that we don't have is the adjacent side. So I'm gonna cross him off, we don't use him, okay? 
So now we need to decide which trig function we're going to use, sine, cosine, or tangent. O and H are the two things that I'm given, so we're going to use sine. All right, so now we write this out, sine, and we always put inside of sine what our angle is. But in this case, we don't know how many degrees the angle is, so we're just going to call an X. Okay, and we still do O over H, okay, on the right side. So opposite is 6, hypotenuse is 10, and that's what he's going to look like over there, okay? So, setup is exactly the same. You just plop your numbers in where they go, except now I'm trying to solve for x. I'm trying to get him out of here, okay? So, in order to get him out of here, I can't just divide the sign over to the other side because my calculator will say, like, error. That's not good. So, what I do to get rid of sign, you might notice on your calculator that there is a sign button, okay? But there's also right here, if you do, if you do this, hit the second key, there's, it looks like sine to the negative one power, okay? That's what we're going to use because if I take sine, it's called inverse sine. If I do inverse sine and sine together, they cross each other off. But then I have to do it to the other side also. So x equals inverse sine of 6 over 10, okay? And then I just plop that into my calculator and it will give me the measurement of that angle. Okay, so here's what it looks like in my calculator. I would just do second sine of 6 over 10. And I just do like 6 divided by 10, and that's what he looks like. Enter, and it's telling me that that is 36.9. Okay, and since we're dealing with angles, 36.9 degrees is what he would be. Okay, that's how big that angle is. Okay, 36.9 degrees. So when you're solving for angles, you're going to have to use inverse whatever, inverse sine, inverse, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, whatever whatever you need, okay? Um, when we're solving for this length on the other side, it was just using one of the trig functions and that was it, okay? All right, so let's go down here. Round to the nearest tenth. Uh, we did that for the point nine, so that was good. Now in, in part B, we're solving for angle B, okay? So I'm gonna circle him, and he is not labeled, so we're gonna call him X, okay? This is the same type of problem again, okay? Um, so solving for x, we need to figure out which trig function we're using. So 8 and 16, let's label them. Are they opposite hypotenuse adjacent? Which ones are we using? Okay, I'm going to start by labeling this one. This one is the opposite, Okay, which we're not going to use because we don't have anything labeled over there. The hypotenuse is 16. That means the adjacent side is 8. Adjacent means right next to. So the two that we're using are a and h. Okay. Now, we need to decide which trig function uses A and H, okay? So that one is going to be cosine, all right? Cosine is A and H, all right? So I write out cosine, and we need to put our angle inside of there, but since we don't know our angle, we'll just call it X, okay? Equals, the A goes first, the H goes, or the A goes on top, the H goes on the bottom. So adjacent is on top, eight, 16 goes on the bottom, okay? Now, you might notice that 8 over 16 will reduce to 1 half, and you can do that if you want to rewrite it as, as 1 over 2. You sure can do that. It's not going to make a difference if we type it into our calculator after we um, take the inverse cosine. It's not going to matter. Um, but if you want to reduce it, that's fine. So now I want to get x solved for, so I have to get rid of the cosine, and the only thing that will get rid of the cosine is an inverse cosine, or that cosine to the negative 1. He will cross off here, but if I do that to that side, I have to also do inverse cosine of 8 over 16. So it will look like x equals inverse cosine of 8 over 16, and that's what he will look like. Okay, so just type it in. Okay. Second cosine of 8 over 16. Okay, just like that. Hit enter, and that is 60. That comes out really nice. x equals 60 degrees. Okay, that one I didn't even have to round because it, was, it came out really nicely to start with. Okay, so 60 degrees. All right, um, we'll do one more. Uh, we'll do part A of the story problem. Maybe we'll skip part B um, because we've already done quite a few examples to start with already. So angles of elevation and angles of depression. Okay, um, so and when you think of depression, um, like depression is a mental status, but it also means to like depress something down. Okay, so if you have a straight horizontal line here and you're depressing it, that means you're lowering it, basically. So I'm taking this guy and I'm lowering it down. 
um, and that will make this angle right here. So this is considered an angle of depression, okay? Now, in addition to that, an angle of elevation would be like taking this horizontal line here and elevating it up, okay? Elevate means to raise, so that would be this angle right here. That's an angle of elevation, okay? So starting with this top angle, uh, moving it down, that's going to create an angle of depression. Starting with the bottom uh, horizontal line, raising it up, that's going to create an angle of elevation. So that's what he looks like. All right, so a golfer is standing at a tree, looking up uh, to the green on a hill. And uh, if the tee is 36 feet lower than the green, okay, so here's the, kind of the top of the hill, and this is like a 36-foot drop, okay, uh, vertically, a 36 vertical drop. Um, the angle of elevation from the T to the hole is 12 degrees. So think of that as this horizontal line being raised up. That's going to be an angle of 12 degrees. Okay. They want to know to find the distance from the T to the hole. Okay. So we don't know what we're necessarily solving for. But distance from T to the hole. Here's the T. Here's the hole. So I'm just finding that length there. So I'm finding this side right here, okay? So think about what they're asking. I'm going to label that with an X, okay? Find distance from T to the hole. Uh, that's going to be labeled as X. All right, so solving this exactly the way that we did up above, um, we are solving for a side and not an angle, okay? So up here solving for angles, we had to use an inverse trig function, like inverse sine, inverse cosine. This one we're solving for a side, so this is going to be similar to the to the front side page that we just did. We're not going to be using a trig, or not going to be using an inverse function. Okay, we can just do it straight in our calculator, sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay, so let's set up what this looks like. First step: find the angle. The angle is 12. 12 is this guy right here. Okay, so figure out what x and 36 are in relationship to 12. 36 is going to be opposite. X is going to be the hypotenuse. That means this guy is the adjacent side, which we're not going to use because he's not labeled. Okay. So opposite hypotenuse, those are the two that we're using, okay? And then which trig function is that? Opposite hypotenuse is going to be sine, okay? So sine, and then I need to take sine of the angle. Now in this case, we know what the angle is. The angle is 12. Opposite over hypotenuse, I would do 36 over x, okay? Now this one's a little bit tricky too because the x is in the bottom here now, right? X is in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is to get the x out of the bottom, I'm going to multiply by x, just like we would do before, okay? So now I have that gone, and now I have x times the sine of 12 equals 36, but I want to get x by itself. So since x is being multiplied by sine of 12, I'm going to divide by sine 12, okay? Divide by sine 12, and then I have x is just equal to 36 divided by the sine of 12. And then I can solve for that. And I can just type that into my calculator. So here's what it looks like typed in. 36 divided by sine of 12. Close my parentheses. Okay, enter. X is going to be 173.2. We'll round to one decimal again. 173.2. Okay, I was solving for a side. And so let's think about what the units will be on uh, the end of this number. Okay, we were solving for this length right here and all my lengths are measured in feet. So 173.2 feet is what that will look like, okay? All right, I'm gonna skip the next example, and that is what I have for notes for 9-1. We're done with 9-1 now. Woo.